This lesson will focus on evaluating indices at National 5. We can relate an index and root together in the following manner. The square root of x is equivalent to x to the power of 1 half. Likewise, the cube root of x squared is equivalent to x to the power of 2 thirds. For this, we say top number stays, bottom number strays. Example 1. Evaluate 81 to the power of 1 half. I'm looking to evaluate 81 to the power of a half. To do that, I need to change it back into a root. So I need to take my fractional index and move that back into a root. To do that, in the fraction, the top number stays, the bottom number strays to the outside of the root. So what I mean by that, top number stays, so the one's gonna stay here, but the bottom strays to the outside of the root. So that goes in there. So that now reads as the square root of 81 to the power of 1. The square root of 81 is 9. And 9 to the power of 1 is simply just 9. All we need to remember, top number stays, bottom number strays. Example 2. Evaluate 27 to the power of 2 thirds. In example two, we've got 27 to the power of two thirds. Same thing again, top number stays, bottom number strays. So I have my 27 here. So that top number is going to stay there. The bottom number strays to the outside of that root. That now becomes the cube root of 27 squared. Always make the number smaller before you make it larger. It will be significantly easier to do this in a non-calculator. The cube root of 27. So I'm looking for a number that I can multiply by itself. Three times it gives me 27. So the cube root of 27 must be 3. And then I still have to square that. 3 squared gives me a final answer of 9. Example 3. Evaluate 8 to the power of negative one-third. Example 3 moves slightly into a more A-level style question, so to speak. We have 8 to the power of negative one-third. For me to evaluate anything, the first thing I need it has to be a positive index. So, this 8 is attached by this negative a third. In front of every number, technically, you can see that it's been multiplied by the number 1. So I could rewrite this as 1 multiplied by. Now, the reason I'm doing that, to show you that I'm going to leave that number 1 in the top, and I'm going to take this downstairs to become 8 to the power of positive a third. By doing that, I now have a positive index. Now, this is going to be really important moving on to higher, actually. We never want a negative index, so you have to bring it downstairs to make it positive. From there, then let's use our top stays, bottom strays. So 8 to the power of 1 third now becomes the cube root of 8 to the power of 1. So I still have my 1 in my numerator. Now the cube root of 8 is 2. And 2 to the power of 1 just stays 2. So my final answer is 1 half. Example 4. Part A, simplify v to the power of one half multiplied by v to the power of one third. Part B, hence evaluate when v equals 64. In our final example, we're going to link a few things together here. So to begin with, we want to simplify this thing. When we're simplifying, we look for the same base, i.e. the same letter, which we've got here is v. When we're multiplying, we're going to add our powers. So I've got my v here, and I'll just come off to the side. 1 half adding 
one third. We're looking for a common denominator of two and three, so that must be six. To go from two to six, I multiply by three, so I do the same to the top, and that leaves me a three there. To go from three to six, I multiply by two, I do the same to the top, and that leaves me a two there. So I now have three sixths, adding two sixths, which leaves me with a final answer of five sixths. So I'll now bring that in here. So my final answer is V to the power of five sixths. In part B, the question starts with the word hence. As soon as it says hence, we know that we need to use an answer from above. So in this instance, we need to use this. So we have V to the power of five sixths. And we are told that V is equal to 64. So that will now be 64 to the power of 5 sixths. Now we're at a stage here that's really difficult and it's something that I would be expecting you to get potentially in an exam. So don't panic if you're a little bit unsure just now. Go through it in steps. 64 to the power of 5 sixths. If I want to evaluate that, I must change it back into a root. So let's do that first of all. Top number of the fraction stays, bottom number strays to the outside of the root sign. So that will be the sixth root of 64 to the power of 5. Now if you get to this stage, you've done brilliant. Now I'm looking for what is the sixth root of 64? So what number can I multiply by itself six times that gives me an answer of 64? I always just start with the number 1. So I've got 1 multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1. That just gives me 1. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. By 2 is 8. By 2 is 16. By 2 is 32. By 2 is 64. So therefore, the sixth root of 64 has to be 2, which I then have to take to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 gives me a final answer of 32. Really difficult, but if we can get this, we're doing exceptionally well.